Hi, I'm Catherine Cleary. I work for Cooking Matters by Share Our Strength. And I'm MB Mitchum. I work for Cornell Cooperative Extension. And we're gonna be chatting together today a little bit about how we can feed our families with a little more flexibility. Um, MB, I know that you have a lot of experience working with hunger in rural settings, and I'm curious to hear why you feel like rural hunger is unique. So rural hunger is a little bit different from urban or suburban hunger, just because of the distance that rural families live away from any sources of uh, food access. So whether that is a grocery store and the grocery stores in rural communities often have prices that are higher because it's um, more costly to transport that food there. Mm -hmm. They also tend to have produce that is lesser of a quality for the same distance based reason. Um, governmental assistance or other charitable food assistance programs often are not as easily accessible by rural communities too, mm -hmm. thus exacerbating the problem. Sure, so it sounds like given all of that food skills uh, must be really important. How can you help us understand why food skills education can have such an impact in rural communities? So believe it or not, one of the questions that I'm asked about most commonly in my line of work is how to cook things, just basic cooking skills. Mm -hmm. So rather than taking a recipe, following that recipe exactly, and then understanding that, oh, I don't have one ingredient, what do I now do? Mm -hmm. Because rural families can't just pop right back to the grocery store. They, it takes a bit of distance. Uh, learning how to provide food for yourself, how to cook for yourself, but then also know what substitutions that you can make so you're not bound to any sort of recipe. So if there was one thing that all families in a rural setting could know about how to make it easier to cook and feed their families nutritious food, what would you say that was? Say a cup, combination of two things. So one would be learning how to buy in advance. So I try mm -hmm. to purchase things that are on sale. Um, so whether it's meat or canned beans or whatever it is, um, I will buy extra so I have extra at, at home. That way, if I want to cook something, I don't have to worry about running out to the grocery store. Um, the second is to be creative. So using whatever I have on hand, um, and for rural families that might be venison, it might be, um, fish, it might be plants that they grew themselves, it might be weeds that they harvest and then decide to eat, but it also could be seeing what I have in my cabinet and then throwing that together to come up with something nutritious. That's awesome. So on, in the name of all of that, I think you're gonna take us through a quick uh, soup demo, is that right? That is right. So I'm at my office today and I was looking through the cabinets to see what do we have here? What could I make with what we have on hand? So I have vegetable stock. Now, I, this is just what I happen to have, but you could also use beef or chicken or whatever else. Um, I have lentils. Lentils are wonderful, uh, staple to have on hand. They're very small, um, but they pack a huge nutritional punch. They're also very, very inexpensive. Mm -hmm. I have uh, canned tomatoes. These are canned diced tomatoes on hand. Um, so again, at home, I would have a lot of canned uh, tomato sauce maybe on hand or even tomato sauce that I put up from the summer before. And I have the ubiquitous beans. So these happen to be black beans, but I would use whatever beans I have on hand. So I see that I have broth, tomatoes, beans, and lentils. So I think kind of like a chili flavor. So I am going to be adding to this chili powder mm -hmm. and cumin and a crushed red pepper, not a ton because my love of spice is not the same as everyone else's, and garlic powder. And I have this all cooking right now, believe it or not, Ooh. over here. You can see that the lentils are cooking. So I just added the veggie stock and the lentils and the tomatoes for right now, and then all of the spices so they all get to cook together. And then when all of the liquid has cooked off, then I will add the black beans in. Um, if I had frozen vegetables um, like okra or corn, I could throw that in. And then if I want to add meat in, you know, if my family absolutely wanted to have meat for this and make this more of a chili, I could add ground meat and make it a full meal. So what I love about what you're working with is those are a lot of shelf stable mm -hmm. items that you can have on hand that you can bulk buy when you do have the opportunity to go to the grocery store. Um, and they're all really neutral, right? You saw those and thought, oh, I'm gonna add some spices that will make it taste like chili. Someone else might see that and add some cinnamon and some turmeric and, and make a completely different dish um, for the same cost. 
and with the same um, access level, right? Being able to grab those same staple ingredients, which is awesome. Um, something else that I love about soups and stews is that they can feed a crowd and they can feed a crowd multiple times, right? They freeze so beautifully. Um, and I think one of the things that we wanna always be mindful of is um, always being able to see dinner when you open your fridge or your cabinets and having something that freezes so nicely and reheats so nicely um, in your back pocket, I think makes that a lot easier. And two, if you don't want to eat the same thing over and over again, I know that my kids have never been huge on leftovers. You can also take something like this and then add different things to it or use it as a base for shepherd's pie. So after this is done, I could take that lentil mixture, use it as a shepherd's pie, layer uh, vegetables on top of it, mashed potatoes on the top. Um, I could also turn this into a taco filling and then use tortillas and then wrap up and add some lettuce and tomatoes and cheese and have a completely different dish. So things like this are very versatile. Yeah. Any final thoughts on connecting rural communities with food skills education? No, oh, look for your local extension agency. Every state has their own extension office in New York State. It happens to be Cornell Cooperative Extension, but each state has its own land grant university and your extension office will be a very cost-effective resource for you to be able to learn some new skills. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me today, Envy. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Catherine. Okay, talk to you soon.